to the Dawn of War Crucible tutorial. Today we will be looking at the Imperial Guard, their strengths and weaknesses, and how to play them. Before we start, one thing I would like to mention is if you go into the game options and scroll all the way down, there is a dev mode. This mode is very useful for testing any faction. So what I recommend, and this is what goes for when you're learning any faction, is to go, tick this on, and go into the game and simply do what I will do in this video. Go through the entire faction, go through all of their units, read all of their descriptions. It will give you a much better idea of how the faction works and how it compares with the others. So without further ado, let's dive in. So. Let's start with some major strengths and weaknesses of the Imperial Guard. Their strengths mostly concern their versatility and their economy. Most playstyles you can think of are viable with the Imperial Guard, except for tanky infantry. They, you can go mass infantry with support with commanders, you can go mass tanks, you can go aircraft and deep striking shenanigans. You can focus on economy, you can focus on turtling. Vi virtually any playstyle is possible with the guard. The other strength of theirs is economy. As I will show later, they get their economy online a bit earlier than some of the other factions, and hence they can snowball into the late game faster. Their major weaknesses concern their learning curve, as they are quite difficult to learn at the moment. There is a lot of things you need to keep in mind and a lot of things you need to do in order to play them effectively, as well as having strong counters. If you go mass infantry, because of the way your infantry works, any sort of AoE weapons or grenades will uh, signif do significant damage. If you go mass vehicles, then obviously anti-vehicle will kill you. And if you go for turrets, then anti-buildings will stop you in your tracks. So, the main feature of the Imperial Guard is the garrison feature. Any unit that you have can be put into your HQ, uh, the infantry command, and the listening post. These units will not, uh, these units will not only shoot out but they can also be transferred between one building and another this inherently gives them a pseudo webway of the eldar uh, making it quite viable to play aggressively and jump all over the map with their infantry <laughs> so to start with their hq their builder very standard builder. Uh, <clears throat> quite thank you for a builder, but main thing to note, it cannot be reinforced like some other builders can, but it can be attached to units to try to keep it safe. Conscripts, they are <clears throat> a very weak unit, but uh, with their main benefit being that they're super cheap. 50 requisition for a capping unit is less than most other factions, not to mention that they do not cost any supply, which makes it very viable to get a bunch of them and go all over the map capturing a ton of points at the same time. One other thing to note about their early game is because their listening posts can hold units inside of them, this can both be used to transfer your squads across the map, as well as keeping your workers safe. Most other factions, when they go to cap uh, to build listening posts, incur a lot of risk on their workers, as their workers can be killed, uh, and with whilst IG can just hide them inside and keep them safe and transfer them to a different place. Commissar uh, is one of the is the first indication of what IG infantry is strong at, which is providing multiple buffs. Commissar specifically, as the description shows, provides morale and morale regen, which can be quite useful, especially on low morale squads such as the 
conscripts. As you can see, attaching the commissar made their morale go from 100 to 500. And even just having... yeah. So, moving on to their basic squads, we have infantry guardsmen and uh, uh, guardsmen riders. The guardsmen are cheap, uh, only 100 requisition. And they make for a decent fighting unit. However, in most scenarios, I would actually recommend the riders. Simply being, they are much faster. In the early game, mobility is king. As you, especially on bigger maps, you want to be all over the map, capturing as many points as you can. And a faster unit that can both tie enemies up, run away from enemies, and quickly cap and decap points is going to be way more useful than a basic ranged unit. There, so starting with their commanders. The lieutenant provides... The, this is important. Look at the last line. Provides health and morale increasing aura. These auras are percentage based. So if you look at the conscripts... This was increased from 750 to 825. This was increased from 1250 to 1375. And these buffs can stack. So, for example, the general also gives a similar aura. So, if you look at the conscripts. As you can see, they were increased in health again. And their lieutenant provides a damage aura, as you can see by this uh, effect. So, these three commanders make up the core of IG's infantry strategy. As what you want to do is you want to get them, you want to attach them to either... You can't attach them to either. You want them to attach them to commissar cadets in the case of the field command and the general. And you want to attach your fire support lieutenant to either a squad of guardsmen or a squad of special weapons. And you have a giant blob of infantry which can efficiently trade into most other factions. The colonel is specifically useful if you're fighting enemy commanders. As you may note, none of these... <clears throat> None of these units are specifically anti-commander. And the only weapon that you really have is uh, requires sniper training. So if you do not would want to get sniper training and have to get sniper rifles to deal with commanders, Colonel is your best choice. He also has some nice options where you can either get a healer, a few sergeants, or a standard bear in the early game. Or an Ogren later. Okay, so moving on to their other support units. Field Medic provides a healing aura around him. Something to note is that he doesn't need to be attached to a unit to provide the aura. So if you don't want him to die, sometimes it is better to keep him outside of the unit rather than attached. As when he's in the unit, he may get targeted down and killed. Whilst outside of the unit, you can micro him. Standard Bearer, very simply, just increases morale. Psyker is your other anti-commander. Specifically because of the Strip Soul ability. So if I were to... Because if I were to get an enemy commander... This ability specifically will does quite a lot of damage. Yeah, even in its description, it says the ability is best used against powerful hero units. This is what I mean by you just need to go into a game like this and read through all of the descriptions of the units. It says on his ability that this is anti-commander. As you can see, a single ability nearly killed the Kataness by itself, 
and dealt over a thousand damage. Obviously, the lightning arc itself, obviously both the lightning arc and the curse of the machine spirits are both quite useful abilities in their own right, but primarily what you want to keep in mind is that psychers are your anti-commander. Priests, they are your melee buff, uh, melee <clears throat> characters. So you want to get them to attach to melee units such as Commissar Cadets, or if you know that your ranged units are going to be engaged in melee and you need a strong units to support them. So moving on to the other infantry. Special weapon teams are your tier 1 versatile unit. They have a lot of different weapons for many different use cases, as well as anti-tank support uh, option. Well, the guardsmen get that option as well, but yes. The main primarily thing with them is their a variety of weapons. And you also get the heavy weapon suppression team, which entrenches and <clears throat> shoots at enemies in a large radius around it. It can also get special weapons. So, uh, moving on to their tier 1. Vehicles. They get access to a few. Chimera and uh, Kronos Pattern Chimera are both transports. Important to note, they are not meant to be necessarily fighting units. Sure, they do good damage. But their main thing is their support abilities, their transport capability, and simply the fact that they are a vehicle. They can ram into things, they can disrupt the enemy, they can do a lot of that kind of stuff. So you're, if you're going into tier 1 just to spam these guys and nothing else, that's probably not a great idea. So, Hellhound. Uh, as you can see. Infantry, heavy infantry structures. So it basically has a flamer, does good anti-infantry uh, and anti-structure damage. Specifically, this is your anti-structure because quite frankly, your infantry, especially with plasma weapons or... Um, yeah, especially with something like the plasma weapons is probably better versus infantry itself. So this is your vehicle anti-structure. So let's say... You know, you're dealing with a listening post and you don't want to lose your infantry. You send your vehicle up front, it does uh, damage, but it also tanks. And there you go, you come out of that fight without losing any HP on anything. Sentinel is your fast walker. It's considerably faster compared to other vehicles. It can either be equipped with a short-range flamer in the early game for harassing listening post or a long-range missile walk launcher for harassing from long range and it also provides protection after the research one uh, important thing to note is also is grenades and researches so grenades let's go through those first frag grenades deals a bunch of damage in an area stun grenade uh, if you throw it in an area, you can read the exact damage that it does, but basically you want to throw this at enemies, and then it will prevent them from doing anything. It will significantly reduce their damage. Crack grenades are your anti-vehicle. Smoke grenades is something that you want to put on your units as you approach. So let's say there was an enemy army over here, and I wanted to go attack it, right? If I just move up, my infantry will probably get killed before they can really get to the enemy or I will be fighting at a severe disadvantage. If you use the smoke grenades to throw it here, whenever your infantry goes through this area, they will get a... You can see the defensive buff over here. They will get a increase to their range damage reduction. So they will be much tankier moving through. This is imperative when moving your infantry uh, into the enemy. If the enemy is attacking you, you can throw it on yourself anyway, but it's specifically good for, you know, when you're moving into the enemy. So there, there's all of these upgrades. Very, very important. 
you get everything from more HP to more health to more accuracy to ha having more weapons. You can read through all of these yourself, but all of these are super important and you should basically get them as soon as you can, unless you are been building no infantry. Unless you're not building infantry at all, all of these are really good in their own unique ways. So, moving into tier 2. One thing to note. IG get their uh, requisition building in tier 2 rather than tier 3. So what do I mean by requisition building? Multiple factions have buildings that will increase their requisition income at the cost of power. So you see, it increased requisition. But it costs a lot of power, and the power cost keeps increasing to build. So, what you want to do is you want to build both the industry commands and more HQs or more gen simultaneously. So, because what's going to happen is because you're going to build these with power, which will give you more requisition, which will give you the requisition to build more HQs and more plasma generators, which will give you more power to build more industry commands, and it just keeps scaling basically infinitely. Be most factions get this in Tier 3. Getting it in Tier 3 can be quite significant, especially on maps with fewer listening posts, as you can get way more economy earlier than most other factions. I will go through all of their buildings later. So uh, first, let's finish off their infantry and their vehicles. So Kasserkin. Kasserkin as your are your advanced tier two infantry. This is basically your best ranged infantry, not accounting for the aerial support doctrine and the Elysian drop troops. These are your best ranged infantry. They have their own upgrades to make them even better, and. Yeah, they're just good infantry, full stop. They have a nice weapon variety. So, in terms of vehicles, a Hydra AA tank very simply is an anti-aircraft gun. If you're facing a lot of aircraft, get this. It will absolutely destroy any aircraft it comes across. Oh, also, these upgrades, specifically the chemical weapons, the nerve gas, is very, very strong. And obviously there's other upgrades here that you can read. Basilisk is your first artillery. It's not particularly good at anything. It says it's versus infantry and versus heavy infantry because it will throw it around and reduce its morale, but fundamentally it's not really good versus everything, it's ranged support. And Lehman Russ, which is your basic tank. Similarly, just throws uh, damages infantry and throws it around and does decent damage to vehicles. So, you also get access to the Vox operator, who has, who similarly has an aura, like the general, or the, uh, where is the lieutenant? The field command lieutenant. He has a similar aura, which will increase the health of the units around him. If you see, let me move him away. The, their health decreases as you move him closer. Their health increases. Okay. That's why you can only get one. Because if you could get multiple of them, then you could stack these auras infinitely. And because they're multiplicative auras, you would get some very, very tanky uh, units. So again, make sure to get this as much as possible. Another upgrade to note in Tier 2 is uh, send in the next wave. This upgrade makes your guardsmen cheaper and makes them better than special weapons when it comes to damage when they're fully reinforced. So now a fully reinforced squad of guardsmen is better than a full squad of special weapon teams. So, the way it goes is Guardsmen are obviously better in Tier 0 because you can't get Special Weapons in Tier 1. Then, Special Weapons teams become better in Tier 1. And then Guardsmen become better again in Tier 2 onwards as your frontline. Obviously, you want Kasserkin as you, if you want straight up damage. But if you want a cheap frontline unit, Guardsmen are the way to go in Tier 2 onwards. Okay. 
uh, in the comms tower, you get a bunch of aircraft and the transport, all pretty self-explanatory in their uses. So, going into tier 3, you get access to Ogrens. These are your tanky frontline infantry to replace Commissar Cadets, basically. Very tanky, especially with the buffs. Look, three models have this much health. This is Space Marine levels of health, basically. So, very, very tanky. As for vehicles, you get two more artillery. Griffin Mortar, which is your artillery. For, it starts off anti-morale, anti-infantry, and heavy infantry. And then it has a upgrade, which can make it very good versus structures and demons. So if you need to deal specifically with structures and demons, get the Griffin Mortar, it will do wonders. The Medusa is your anti-vehicle anti-titan. It will, from long range, do heavy damage to vehicles, and it's fairly good at ti killing titans as well. It won't, it won't kill titans straight up, but it's good supporting damage if you're trying to take up a tit uh, tough titan. Then there is a, another tank. Again, it yeah, it's another long-range tank, basically a longer ver ver uh, version of the Lehman Russ. Uh, things that you get in Tier 3 to note is Armored Command with a bunch of different variations of the Lehman Russ, again, as well as the Death Strike Missile Launcher. All of these have their own uses which are described in their description and the death strike missile launcher is basically a mobile nuke center and you also get the mars pattern command where you can get your relic vehicles again they describe their uses here so i won't spend too much time on them bane blade versatile basically if you don't know what you're going against and you're not sure what to get get the bane blade storm blade anti-vehicle anti-titan Storm Sword anti structure, uh, Fire Sword anti demon, Storm Lord transport, and in general a little bit tankier. Okay. So, yeah. That is it for tier 3. So, moving on to tier 4, you get access to Shadow Sword and Storm Hammer. Storm Hammer is a tankier, more damaging version of the Bane Blade. If you're not sure what you're going against, just get the Storm Hammer. It's good. Shadow Sword is specifically anti-Titan. It has a an ability which this ability which does ridiculous damage to Titans, and its main attack does ridiculous damage to single targets. But it has a major weakness versus multiple targets, and it is very squishy. Compare it, for example, to the Storm Hammer, which has basically double its health. Okay. You also get a bunch of Titans. I would recommend just going through each of them and looking at all of their weapon upgrades. They have a lot of different upgrades that will be reworked and descriptions will be fixed in the newest patch, which will be patch 2.04. So I recommend going through all of them yourself when that patch comes out. And let me show the uh, Death Strike Missile Launcher as well. Yeah. Doesn't shoot by itself, but it has an ability which basically is a mobile nuclear center. Okay. One thing to note in the Matter Industry Command is the Mars Pattern Convoy. Now, it heals all vehicles. So if you're going for vehicle build where you have Bane Blades up front with a bunch of Lehman Russes to support and stuff like that, get a few Mars Pattern Command. It's basically free healing for all vehicles in an area. Yeah, and Torox is the same but for infantry. Okay. So, 
that is it for all the tiers. Obviously, tier 5, you get the Basilisk Magnus, but I'll let you discover that for yourself, as well as the other Titans. So that is most of their units. And you get a better uh, a Vulture Gunship as well. In tier 4, I'm pretty sure. Oh, uh, one more unit I forgot. The Vindicare Assassin. This is your later game anti-commander. If the Psyker and the Colonel aren't doing it, Vindicare will do a lot of damage. Not to mention he also provides a massive vision range. So let me just show you. Come on, don't miss. One shot the cannoness when it didn't miss. So yeah, so that's most of their units. Next, I will move on to the build order. The IG build order sticks fairly close to the standard build order I described in my general guide. Engine Seer, three conscripts, two Engine Seers. If you're on a bigger map, you may potentially want to grab more conscripts. More conscripts after this, and maybe one or two more Engine Seers if you're in a big map with a lot of points. But for this map, three is enough. A standard. Conscripts. Choices. If you're confused by what I'm doing and can't follow this, just go uh, to the general guide. I describe what I do in here in detail in there. So uh, just as the first listening post finishes, you get a squad of riders, you start putting uh, a listening post on it. One thing to note, note I am not reinforcing my conscripts. This is one of the major pitfalls that many new players make. Do not reinforce your conscripts straight off the bat. Keep, ta keep track of this resource tab and you will notice that I will constantly basically run it out. I will constantly be out of the resources, and if I would have reinforced my conscripts, then I would have completely been out of resources. Have the first squad of riders roll up to the enemy. This map is small enough to where the riders don't need to cap, they can go harass the enemy instead, but on a bigger map you may want them to cap. Second squad of riders, capping more listening posts. Ooh, second squad of riders can go over here. And as you can see, this is harder AI, by the way. I am harassing harder AI as IG in the early game. The rider supports the conscripts and makes sure that the conscripts don't die. And they run out enemy infantry. And might as well get a second generator. Get some of these upgrades. Look, out of resources, basically. If... If I reinforced the conscripts, I would be out of resources. I wouldn't be able to build listening posts, which would be a giant loss of a lot of things. But for, yeah, it would be a giant loss of requisition, and that would snowball later into the game to be even worse. There you go. The riders are just going around. They are harassing different points. It's all fine. It's all dandy. After this engine here finishes, put it in. Pata put out here. It needs to build more gens in the armory. Sure, let's see enforce these riders since I have the requisition. This can probably go over here. Try to cap them. We got some melee infantry. Reinforce this point as well. Have. Yep, yeah, there we go. Have you cap this? Well, actually, yeah. Uh, you can cap over here. You can cap that listening post later. You can go cap that listening post. And the riders are doing their job. They are distracting the enemy. They are keeping the enemy contained to their base. You can go over here. 
go over here. And all of the listening posts have the first upgrade very early on. Fortunately, I forgot to put on the timer, so I can't show you the exact timing. But this is quite early into the game. So the risers, they're losing their fight. No worries. Just gonna pull them back. Even if I lose them, it's not a big deal. All of their listening posts are now upgraded. And I have control of most of the map. So even if the AI tries to attack me, it's gonna have a very hard time attacking into this. So let's build another gen. Probably get another engines here. I'll need more of them. And let's see if they cap this listening post. Yep, see, they're coming to attack. But even if they too, do try to attack one of my points, again, I can quickly build a squad, put it in here, deep strike it, well, not deep strike, but tunnel it to here. And then, because of that, it makes it very easy to hold listening posts, even ones that are under attack. So, I'm getting tier 1. Let me get these leaders. And let me show you a quite easy uh, <clears throat> uh, timing with infantry. So what you want to do is grab a squad or two of Commissar Cadets, grab the general, And grab, depending on what you're facing against, I'll grab, uh, yeah, I'll grab some medics and some psychers. So if you feel like your infantry is building too slow, feel free to build a second command. You will want the pop cap anyway, so it's good to build them. So the field of support lieutenant goes attached onto the one squad. When the general builds, he attaches onto the other squad. And now he build a few squads. Actually, I don't need this, so let's just refund this. And let's get some of these upgrades. All right, men. Time to wage war. Standing ready. Standing ready. This general gets attached to the other squad. And Fire Support Lieutenant gets attached to the Special Weapons. Let's get a Psycho or two as well. Whilst the third squad is building. And now we can start to reinforce these guys. I also like to go infantry doctrine and uh, for the extra leaders and in general just more morale but it's not necessary so I will show it off here without that. So let's get some uh, sergeants and let's get some anti-tank as well whenever you can. Since I'm running out of power Note that I'm constantly running out of power, but not of requisition, so no worries. Let's just build another generator. Not a big deal. But yeah. And this is your army that you can get fairly early on. If you don't want to do this, you can instead reinforce your listening posts, and you'll be fine. If you got map control early, you go up to six gens, you get this upgrade to get more uh, power, you get this and this to get more requisition on all of your listening posts, and you're sitting pretty with ridiculous economy. Sure, let's reinforce these guys and send them in as well. And let's see how this timing attack does versus harder AI. You probably don't want to get the weapons until you see what you're facing. So, my opponent seems to be mostly infantry. So, I will get some plasma and some grenade launchers as well as the Infernal. And as you can see, this is very tanky. Like, all of the health and damage cumulative buffs are make this very, very tanky. Oh, and I forgot to get grenades. If I was being efficient, you could get grenades to make this fight even more one-sided, but I'm just going to show off that, you know, 
even without grenades, the lazy version of this build can just beat harder AI like that, like it's nothing. The AI has barely pulled up a fight. And there you go. The AI is basically dead. I can finish off its buildings. It's not going to be able to resist me. And yeah, this game is basically done. So if you don't want to do this, what do you do? Well, you get a second HQ. And then you build more plasma generators and you continue uh, echoing that way. So if you want to, let's say, go for tier 2 vehicles, you get all of these upgrades on all of your listening posts. You get this upgrade on your power. Don't forget this one. This one is very important. You get a second and uh, maybe a third HQ. Up front, uh, it's better. I put it kind of to the side. It's better to put it up front in the front lines as the HQs are very tanky. And they are basically the tankiest frontline kind of wall-like building that you have until tier 2 and you get proper walls. Speaking of buildings, let's go through their buildings. So tank traps are just uh, for blocking movement. The These will be reworked next patch, so I'm not going to comment on their use as well, I'm not sure exactly what they will do. Mines are great for against rushes. So if someone if someone is building up an army and trying to rush you, you put a bunch of mines down, they will step on them, and they will lose morale, they will lose a bunch of health, and many de uh, factions such as demons or tyranids will get absolutely destroyed by mines. Turret, fairly basic turret, the way most factions work. Then you have defensive wall, you put it down, it's a giant shield. Not particularly useful versus players currently, these are going to be reworked as well, so I'm not sure exactly how we will make them work. You will need to read their description. But yeah, uh, you just put them down and they're quite useful for getting the AI to shoot it and not your important stuff. Basilisk, Earthshaker platform, is basically a basilisk but as a platform. Better walls. And obviously you have the basilisk magnus, which is just giant artillery. Yep, and that's all of their buildings basically. So, as you can see, I have not participated in this fight from the, from the first minute of the engagement, and I have just defeated a harder AI like it was nothing. Like This took very little effort of, whatsoever. I didn't get grenades, I didn't micro my units properly, specifically the cadets, to engage the enemy infantry. I just kind of sent them across the map, and they mostly did the thing, their own thing. The only thing I did is get the proper weapons, depending on what I was fighting. And there you go. So, hopefully this was useful to all of you playing IG. A uh, specific note to all of you who are having trouble with the sisters on the campaign. Do this build. If you do the build that I just showed, you should have no problem with sisters. And yeah, that's it. That's me signing off. See you all in the next guide.